Hi guys, I'm artist Lillian Gray and I'm also the owner of the Lillian Gray Fine Art School. This is a message from the bottom of my heart. First of all, to all my students from the school and to all the artists out there struggling during this difficult lockdown period. Please stay tuned and I hope you guys get some helpful feedback of how to get through this. In this video, I want to share some key concepts that I've read in various books that really helps me. It's my brain gymnastics for when I get stuck. I will be discussing the concept of the lens, positive and negative emotions. I will also be talking about your values and what are high values, what are low values and how our high values are under attack during this COVID crisis. I will be looking at your mind, your subconscious and your conscious and how we are reaching burnout at the moment. I will be discussing the concept from Julian Cameron about your inner artist, how to be kind to yourself and how to implement some atomic habits that's really going to change this time for you. Um, first of all, I just want to share a technique, um, something that I've learned from my psychologist, Ilza Albert. She is freaking amazing. And I am going to put some links into her podcast on how to deal with emotions during COVID in, um, in the bottom of this video. So go sure to watch them if you feel you need a bit more from Ilza. But this is what I've learned from Ilza. We are wearing glasses. So on the one side, there's the negative, And on the other side, there's the positive. So you are going to see that, oh my word, this sucks. I can't go to the wonderful big studio to go paint anymore. I don't have Lillian to ask for feedback anymore. Um, this is so challenging. Um, it sucks to be out of routine because now I don't have that rhythm of art class time that I am uh, attending and you just feel very frustrated with this lockdown situation. Every single situation in this life that we are faced with has got two lenses and not just one. So what is the positive? Now at the moment you're only looking through the negative and you need to force yourself to open up the positive lens and then you're going to become balanced in your emotions. So the first thing we need to now do is what is the benefit? What is the benefit of the fact that I don't have Lillian Gray in the room with me to tell me how to do my art? What is the benefit that I don't have uh, a dedicated art class time to go to? What is the benefit of being out of routine for this lockdown? And because we are stuck and as humans, we love our negative ways, this is hard, but you've got to force yourself. And I'll tell you what I've found. I have found that this is an amazing opportunity for you as students to break free from your art teacher, to break free from the outside voices telling you how to create, what is correct, how things should be done. This is an excellent opportunity to start trusting your gut. You are a brilliant artist. No teacher makes you that. You decide and you are that. So in psychology, they speak about the locus of control. And if you are depending on an art teacher to be a good artist, your locus of control is outside of yourself. If you are depending on yourself and your own inner voice, your locus of control is inside. And that is probably the biggest gift you can give to yourself as an artist, because nobody can ever take that away from you. I'm going to die. I'm going to evaporate one day or go somewhere else or become see-through or whatever you believe. And your art teacher is also going to move on with her life. You need to stand on your own two feet. And this lockdown is the perfect opportunity to do that. Maybe a great uh, pro from uh, being in lockdown and not going to an art class is that you can unpack your art supplies and your studio in your house and you can keep it like that if you've got enough space and just create for half an hour bursts at a time early morning with a fresh cup of coffee, that lunch time or that very boring conference Zoom call. You can quickly draw something and maybe now there's actually more time for art. And another thing that I've realized is we live in Joburg, which is a hectic city with traffic. So sometimes students arrive at the studio and it takes like half an hour for them to get over their road rage of just walking into our studio. So maybe now you don't have that road rage issue and you can just gently create and actually just move into your creative space. Um, and it's all seamless. There's a big advantage to that.
I'm going to move on to another lesson that Ilza has taught me and that has really changed my life. And this is actually from Dr. Dermartini. I'll put the link down below. Is how you determine your values. Now, all of us in life are driven by our values, our highest values. I'm not going to go into all the detail, but I can tell you what some of my highest values are. And it's super important to know what the people in your family's highest values are and and the people that you are in lockdown with because you guys are going to irritate the living nonsense out of each other because you are going to attack each other's highest values in this time whatever is your highest value you will have so much time for it you will make time for it you will have so much energy for it there'll always be money for it you'll always find money to go buy a charcoal stick even if you can't buy your oros this month um you'll be organized in that you'll be disciplined you'll be inspired and you'll be motivated and you will have an attention surplus to do that, your highest value. For your lowest value, you're going to make less time, you're gonna be less organized, you're gonna have a low energy, you're not gonna to wanna to spend your money on it, it's a grudge purchase, you're gonna be undisciplined, uninspired, unmotivated, and you're gonna have attention deficit disorder when it gets to these things. So I want you to take this link down below, Go and test yourself and see what your values are. This is an excellent, excellent exercise for the whole family to do. Now, I can tell you what's happening during COVID in my house, okay? One of my highest values is my relationship with my husband. My second highest value is empowerment. My third highest value is environment. What is happening during COVID is in South Africa, we are extremely blessed and we have domestic workers, we have gardeners, we have personal assistants. And at the moment in lockdown, I just have none of that. They all had to go home and be with their families. So now this house and the school has to be maintained by me. And I feel like my environment is under so much attack. Because for my kids, environment is not a high value. Fortnite is. And playing Minecraft. So they're not going to help me clean the kitchen. They're not really going to want to help me... Um, tidy up or make the bed it's a low value for them but it's a high value for me as mom and i feel like i can't operate if my environment isn't sorted out because i can't think clearly i always joke and say my mind's a pretty crazy place to be and it's super messy up here i can't have a mess around me so i really needed to go sit down and determine how we're going to have a peaceful household if my values are always under attack because I became nasty when I'm like that. And you don't want to live with me. I become unbearable. So as a family, we had to sit. And the key that you do here, what Ilza recommends, is that you link a high value to a low value. So there's certain things that has to happen in this house. Whether the kids like it or not, they're going to have to help me with the laundry. And they're going to have to hang up their laundry. So I link it to their highest value. Clara, if you help mommy fold all the laundry and hang it up and pack it away, you choose to play Minecraft for an hour today. So it is meeting everybody's needs. And you can go listen to Ilza's podcast to get more on that. But I want to ask you during this time, what are your values and which values are under attack? And then try and fix that as best as you can during this lockdown. Because that is sapping and stealing your energy. And what is happening now during lockdown is that uh, we are so busy with low values. We are simply exhausted. It's not fun because it's just all this nonsense that you keep doing. And I don't actually have time for my high values, which is empowerment, which is art, which is teaching, which is educating, which is changing people's lives. You need to find a way to make space for your high values. Now, I need you to know that you are not alone out there. None of us have been through a lockdown before. None of us know how this is done. It's all new to all of us. Nobody's got a cooking clue what they're doing. About by week three of lockdown, I start getting a lot of WhatsApps and voice calls and stuff. And I'm so grateful for these messages because I also really needed to hear it. And I had some students go, Lillian, I'm just not creative. Um, I just can't do it. I don't feel like painting. I um, picking up a brush makes me want to puke. Um, I can't think of anything worse to do right now. And you know what? 
that is completely normal. And I want to tell you about something that I read in the book, Getting Things Done by David Allen. And I'm going to break it down into layman's terms because I found the book quite boring. But um, <laughs> I'll tell you how this works. You're a computer and you have a CPU drive. And there's only so many cycles, right? You've only got so much RAM. Now what's happened during lockdown is tasks that used to require no CPU cycles now requires a lot of CPU cycles. Let me explain. Usually I would walk up into the studio, I would scream, hey kids, it's art, yay, and I start teaching. Okay, there is just energy in that, love and joy. Now, I need to make sure that I've read all 600 WhatsApps from all the parents. I need to make sure I've folded and saved all the stuff. I need to know exactly where each kid's at. I need to get my Wi-Fi in my studio sorted out because we had all these tech issues with our Wi-Fi during lockdown. I have to install Zoom. I have to make sure everybody else has got Zoom. I need to explain to all the other teachers how Zoom works. Um, by the time I sit in front of my laptop and I have all those little faces on Zoom, I'm already exhausted because things that took no CPU cycles from me are now taking all the CPU cycles from me. Because admin and tedious nonsense like that is not Lillian's compost, okay? It drains me. I'm allergic to admin. I don't like it. Now I've got all these Excel sheets to track who's where and who's doing what, and it's very overwhelming. Um, stuff like doing the laundry is new CPU cycles for me. Doing the washing is like never been an issue. Now it's an issue and it's my problem. The fact that I now have to homeschool the kids is taking a hell of a lot of CPU cycles from me because that's just something that I never spent any brain power on. Now it requires me to multitask and I hate multitasking. Multitasking sucks and it drains me. So I'm exhausted. I want you to be aware of in this book that uh, David Allen talks about your subconscious and your conscious mind and you need to be aware what are the subconscious stuff that has now invaded your conscious mind? And try and get a control of that. And even if you can't get a control of that, I can't just wish my washing away. Um, you can just calm down and create awareness of it. Because when we create awareness of that, and the fact that our CPU cycle can only handle so much, we become kind to ourselves, and we start having empathy with ourselves. And we start having issuing a little bit of grace with ourselves. So this is why this step is so important. And then start thinking about how can you be kind to yourself? How can you push some of this stuff back into the subconscious? We're down to paper plates. I'm all about setting a pretty table. Not during lockdown, chuck that plate away. The less I have to wash, the better. We're all wearing spandex. If I don't have to iron it, sha -na -na. So try and make those stuff that has invaded your conscious space and taken over the CPU cycles, push them back, let it go. You know, maybe you gotta let some of your standards drop. I think my grandmama is turning in her grave that her child is now serving her beloved grandchildren in a paper plate. But hey, it's life. All right, so the next thing I wanna share with you guys is something that I've learned quite a few years ago. It's in the book, The Artist's Way by Julian Cameron. And I just quickly wanna interject here with a little bit of my story. I went and studied art and I can promise you the last thing I wanted to do after I got my art degree was to do art. And we all felt that way. We, I think of the 25 graduates, only five of us, five of us remained artists. And I really just went into this zone where I didn't want to do anything creative. I didn't want to pick up a pen. I didn't want to do anything. And I really had to sit down and be honest with myself because I always have believed and known that art is my calling. And why was I feeling like that? And thank goodness I, I came across this book by Julian Cameron and it really changed my life. Julia has this uh, metaphor that she uses or this image where she talks about your inner child, your inner artist child. And what I've learned is that your inner artist child is not you. You might be 30, your inner artist might only be four years old or two years old. Now, are you going to scream at a two year old because they can't yet run a marathon? Are you going to scream at a four-year-old boy because he can't grow a beard? No, you're not. That would just be mean. But we keep on doing this daily to our inner artist. And the reason I didn't want to create after university is because we've been broken down so much. It's just criticism, 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 criticism. That you're literally like that big tree in the forest that eventually one day the shaman just shouted at him so much it just went... <laughs> 
Somebody can really destroy your art career with all this criticism. And you are the biggest one person to blame. A, a little child is not going to come out and play with you if you keep on beating her with a stick. Not fun, not cool, nobody's going to want to be your friend. So you need to pack away your stick. You need to pack away your criticism. And especially in a time such as this. Remember now, your values are under, under attack. Your CPU cycles are burning out. Your RAM is smoking. You really need kindness. Why? Why? Why now? Do you want to try that super difficult palette knife trick skill that you've never mastered before? Now that you're completely freaked out and stressed, now you want to do that. Just be kind and calm down and pack away the stick. Here's what I believe on how we need to be kind in this time. I want to just touch on another book that I've read by James Clear, Atomic Habits, must read, life-changing book, where he speaks about how the British cycling team really sucked and how this coach came in and he changed little things, micro things, atomic things, which mattress they slept on, the weight of the pedals on the bike, the, the gear that they wore, like da 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 he changed all these micro micro things. And eventually all these things culminated together and it created this tipping point and they became one of the best teams in the world. Um, and they sucked so much at some point that this one brand of bikes didn't want them to drive their bikes. They were like, please, can the British team just not be seen using our bikes because they're going to think it's us. Um, and now people are like, please drive our bikes. You guys are such an awesome team. And the whole point of that whole story is little micro changes eventually stack together, habit stacking stacks together and creates that tipping point. So if you are stuck right now, if you've got all this art lying there and you should have been doing this and you should have been doing that, just back away the should have stick, okay? Back away anything that is challenging right now and go back to stuff that you can do and that you love. If charcoal is your thing and you can mess around with charcoal and look like a bomb exploded in your face and you love it, go for it. No pressure. Okay? If um, finger painting is your thing, go and do that. And it's almost like we're going back to a bit of art therapy. Your art always needs to be your safe space. It is a sacred space. When I did an Imago course, um, I realized that there's a negative space between your spouse and yourself there's an actual space and you can't just dump stuff in that space because you can never take it out of that space again so you've really got to be conscious about what you dump into that space and i think your art space your creative mind is such a space be super careful and conscious about what you dump in there what words you call her what names you call her um keep that space clean and sacred and if anybody wants to bring their terrible critique close to your circle, you say, Los eight. It's mine. Okay? You chase them away, you say, Futsack. This is your space. Art is your space. It's supposed to be your soother. It's supposed to be your haven. It's supposed to be a healing balm. And keep it that way. Um, don't let people steal that from you. So be kind to yourself. Take it slow steps at a time. Tell yourself, Today, I'm just going to draw the basic shapes of that watercolor that I wanted to do. Tomorrow, I'm just going to look at what washes and colors I'd like to do. And I'm just going to wash it. And then the next day, you're going to maybe put on your next layer and your next layer. And tell yourself to start with 10 minutes a day. Okay. Just make it super easy and take away the resistance and all this insane pressure. I'm artist Lillian Gray. I hope these things help you. Check out the links below and get creative and get out there. You are an artist. Nobody makes you an artist. There's this belief. I can't remember which philosopher said this. I'll go check, double check myself. But he said, whatever we do that's not for survival is art. So you just getting dressed in the morning, you making your coffee pretty, that is a creative expression. And just start acknowledging those things and being kind to yourself. I hope you guys can get out there and, well, not leave your house, but I mean, get out to your easel and at least create. <laughs> I love you all and I miss you guys. Bye. <laughs>